Yo, what it do? SRT Gang. Get your boy with the fat swaggy reacts. And we are back with another reaction video, man. And shout out to Mr. Nightmare, man. Like, he dropped the video for us today, man. Today, we're going to be checking out three disturbing true hostile horror stories. Now, like, if you guys not sure what um hostile is, I'm like... Like, it's kind of like, like, when you're going, like, over, like, you know, um, um, like, to, like, I say, like, the UK or, uh, or just out of the United States, basically, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is when you, like, book hotels or whatever, like, outside of the US, like, this is what they call it, I think. I could be wrong, but let me know down in the comments section. But, um, yeah, like, this is when you go, um, like, you can go get a hotel, I think it's um like you can get it um like you know all males or you can get it uh, um you know or like male and female all that basically you know what i'm saying but this is what we're going to be checking out today man so like share comment subscribe let's get this video to 200 likes i mean let's see what mr uh nightmare got for us you know what i'm saying because he normally drop bangers so let's get into it a hostel is a form of low-cost, short-term lodging, where guests share a multi-bed dormitory with a number of other people. Often the beds are in the form of bunk beds, right. and the rooms are meant to fit as many people as possible so as to create for a cheaper alternative to hotels and Airbnbs. These rooms can be single or mixed gender, right. and they can have private or shared bathrooms. Hostels are a common go-to for solo travelers who aren't looking to spend a lot of money on a hotel, or for mm -hmm. people who only really plan on using the place to sleep and not really hang out. The three stories you're about to hear were recounted by solo travelers who stayed in hostels and had not so great experiences with the people they were sharing their rooms with. Alright man, let's go. Let's check it out. I was for a while talking to this French girl that I matched on some dating app after my breakup. We were texting for a while, then started calling and FaceTiming each other almost every night. We connected really well, but she came from a strict family who she still lived with. So when the idea of me visiting her came up, she made it clear she wouldn't be able to host me, and when I asked if she'd want to share a hotel room together, she said not the first couple nights after we met just because her parents would have a freak out. Right. So since I was only 23 and my pockets weren't stuffed, I booked a stay at a hostel not far from her in Paris. I downloaded a couple movies to watch on the 7 hour flight since I already knew I wouldn't be able to sleep, mm, I never count on flights. And I was right, I tried sleeping but didn't even get close. So by the time I landed and then Ubered to the hostel, I was running on zero hours of sleep within the past 24 hours. Mm. I was exhausted. Due to the six hour time difference, it was also like three in the morning, so at least that meant I could just go crash in the bed in the hostel and I wouldn't be jet lagged the next day. Right. I arrived to the hostel, which admittedly wasn't the nicest place ever. It was small. There was a certain odor to the lobby, and the front desk worker oh, wasn't too man. enthusiastic about his job. But it was 3 a.m. after. Oh, yeah. So it's one of these, uh, like, it's like, I'm like, low grade hostels, probably. Like, the, the employees don't really want to be there. The, uh, the, the housekeepers, like, you know, like, not even keeping, you know, the, uh, lobby or the hallways in, in, like, manageable, uh, you know, status. So it's like, hey, hey, hey. And you get what you pay for, you know what I'm saying? So. All, so I had to cut him some slack. I walked to the room I'd be staying in, and there were six beds, five of them empty, but one had a guy sitting on it. He was on his laptop, typing away at something. He looked up at me, then back down at his laptop. I said, hey, but he didn't respond back. He seemed invested in what he was doing, so I just laid down in one of the empty beds. But the light to the room was still on. I asked him if it was okay that I shut off the light. Then he looked at me with a blank expression but didn't say anything. I repeated what I said assuming he didn't hear me, and he nodded his head with this weird smile. So I got up and turned off the lights to the room. Weird smile. I passed out pretty quickly due to my lack of sleep, but surprisingly, I woke up a couple hours later. The room was still dark, but I didn't know for sure what woke me up. I rolled over to my side and looked around the room. It was almost pitch black, but I could see that all the beds were empty. All of them. Where was the other guy that was there earlier? The two bunk beds next to me were empty, top and bottom, but I knew something had to have woken me up. 
I looked on my phone, and it was 5 in the morning. I needed sleep, so I said screw it. He probably left, and maybe a sound from out in the hall woke me up. I lay back down on my side and closed my eyes. The mild traffic noises from outside was all that I heard. Then the bed shook a bit, and I heard a little crack. Hey, bro, I know this nigga not under the bed, bro. He been, like, like, what a weirdo. Man, hold on, man. Side was all that I heard. Then the bed shook a bit, and I heard a little crack of the metal frame, accompanied with this freakish breathing sound. I looked up in horror, and on top of me, I saw a head peering over the edge of the top bunk, oh, looking into the bottom bunk at me. No. I can see the same. See, yeah, like, see, weirdos like this, bro. Like, you, listen, bro. <laughs> it just put me in a hostel by myself, bro. It just put me somewhere by myself. I don't got time for these weirdos sitting here on the top bunk, sitting here looking at, like, what are you doing? Jacking off or something? Like, you weirdo? Like, what's, what is? And creepy smile on his face, looking into the bottom bunk at me. I can see the same creepy smile on his face, and his medium to longish black hair was drooping down with gravity below the top of his head as he hung upside down. It was a horrifying sight that words really can't explain. I screamed and fell off the bed as I realized what I was looking at. He sat up in the top I would have punched him like right in his shit. Black bunk and continued looking at me. I screamed, What the F are you doing? as I threw something at him. He started to laugh this really strange, off-putting laugh. I would have threw something. He immediately I... turned the light on These and went hands. through my stuff to make sure nothing was stolen while watching him at the same time. I then heard a click of a phone camera and looked at him as he was holding his phone up to me, Yo. clearly having just taken a picture of me. He was still laughing while looking at me. Something was wrong with this man. I didn't know if he had some screws loose mentally or if he was doing this with bad intentions. I zipped up my bag and went to the front desk and requested a different room immediately. Right, right. That's exactly what I would have did. I'm like, look, bro, just put me in a room by myself, bro, because I'm going to end up hurting this dude. I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's mentally like, up with this dude, but get it together. One of the single private rooms. After explaining why and trying to get a reduced rate, he wouldn't budge. But he said he'd check on the room with the guest that I was just in. I didn't call the police because I didn't know if any laws were broken. But I sure as hell left a review of the hostel. Right. The rest of my trip there was good. I had a good time with the girl I was seeing. But every time I returned to the hostel, I was scared I'd run into that guy. Right. Man. I don't like how a picture of me is on that weirdo's phone. I'm not a physical guy, but I wish in that instance, I did get physical. Right, for sure. Because I know I would have. <laughs> no hezzy. You feel me? Like, come on. Stop playing with me. Especially when I'm, I'm a solo traveler. I've stayed in countless hostels as a means of saving money while also meeting new interesting people. I've stayed in a total of about 20 hostels in my life, and 90% of the time I've had good experiences. My first truly awful experience though was at a place called Freedom Traveler Hostel. And before I begin, I want to note that my horrible experience wasn't the complete fault of the hostel itself. The Freedom Traveler Hostel is located in Rome. It was my first time ever visiting Rome. I was completely inexperienced to the landscape and relied heavily on Google Maps and locals. In fact, even finding the hostel itself proved challenging as there were no signs for the place outside. But once I found the place, I let myself in through the big brown doors and was greeted by a nice woman working the front counter. I had already booked a stay in one of the four-person rooms. I was led to the room I'd be staying in, which had one bunk bed and two single beds, totaling sleeping space for four people. The room had a green theme to it, but it wasn't the biggest room. The worker told me there weren't many people staying in the hostel at the moment, which I didn't really have a problem with if it would mean I would have more privacy in the room. Right. The woman had a smile on her face the entire time, and I appreciated her help. She showed me where I could store my luggage, which was actually just some shed in the back garden area. I wasn't impressed nor confident with it, so I decided- Yeah, like, I'm not leaving none of my stuff in no shed. For one, I'm I'm bring I'm bringing it to the room where I, where I'm at. Like, like, what the hell? Nah. Just some shed in the back garden area. Uh -uh. I wasn't impressed nor confident with it, mm -hmm. so I decided I'd leave my luggage in the room. Right. Especially since I didn't bring anything too valuable. I was exhausted after a whole day of traveling, so after changing clothes and stowing my luggage under the bottom bunk bed, I laid down ready to take a quick power nap. Not long after, I heard a knock at the door, and two young men walked in. They had thick Italian accents, I could tell right away. They greeted me and started talking to me, even though I was mid-nap, but I'm polite and social, 
so I was friendly and chatted with them. They introduced themselves as Marco and Lucio, brothers. Marco had to be like 6'4", he was huge. Mm -hmm. Lucio was probably 5'11", but he wasn't a toothpick either, and I could see the resemblance in their faces. They were very tan, but both had receding hairlines, even though I could tell they were in their early 20s. They weren't the friendliest looking guys, but at first they seemed okay enough. After getting acquainted in English with them, the two brothers started to talk amongst themselves in Italian. They didn't know that I understood though, because right away I understood them to be talking about me and laughing at me. Yo, I heard I believe Marco describing me as some silly white boy. I could have said something right there in Italian, but instead I wanted to keep the illusion that I didn't speak the language. Mm -hmm. The two brothers eventually got up from their beds and left the room, with Lucio smiling and waving at me as they left. I just realized they didn't have their luggage in the room, which led me to believe they left their luggage in the storage shed in the garden area. I went to the garden area for a bit just to mingle with some of the people sitting out there, and I met a few nice tourists who were also staying there for the weekend. Then off I went to explore the city, heading in the direction of city center. After many hours and two food stops later, I returned to the hostel expecting some people to be socializing in the lounge area or in the back garden, but there was no one. So I figured I'd just get some early shut-eye. It was 9pm anyway. I don't remember when I fell asleep, but I remember waking up. The lights in the room were still off, but I heard whispering voices. The brothers were back. I didn't move. I listened to what they were saying, still speaking in Italian. One of them whispered something that roughly translated to, Just grab it, or are you gonna do it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Grab what? Like, what y'all got going on, bro? Hold up, wait. Whispered something that roughly translated to, Just grab it, or are you gonna do it? I didn't know what it meant, but I had a feeling they were talking about my luggage. Right. I was waiting to hear the sound of my luggage being moved before I would let them know I was awake. But instead, I felt a sweet-smelling, cold and wet cloth being pressed up to my face. Yo, what the hell are you- what? Yo. Ed. I felt a sweet-smelling, cold and wet cloth being pressed up to my face, and I reacted by yelling and swatting it off my face. I turned to see one of the brothers standing over me, and I screamed, what are you doing? The man over me, I couldn't tell which one it was, then got on the lower bed with me and tried to subdue me, but Yo! I kicked him off and screamed for help. The other brother pulled him away from me, and the two men took off out of the room. The I quickly grabbed my bag and shoes and went to the front desk for help. The man who was working now said he saw the two guys leave, but there was no information on them even staying there. They were two random locals who were Yo. trying to rob visitors to the hostel. What? They tried to literally chloroform me. I didn't stay there after that. Of oh, hell no. Nah. See, that's the only thing about me trying to just going over, you know, to overseas and just seeing. Nah, bro, I don't got time, bro. I don't got time, to bro. To the hostel. They mm. tried to literally chloroform me. Mm -mm. I didn't stay there after that, of course. I'm mm -mm. sure they've upped their security now, but when wow, I stayed there, bro. clearly anybody could have just walked right in. And if I wasn't awake, I would have been chloroformed and robbed of my entire bag. Exactly. I was just about to say that, bro, because like, like, like they would have got away with that, bro. Like, 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 like he would have been stuck. You know what I'm saying? Because he don't got no identification. They got everything that he owned, and it's kind of like, bro, like you literally are stuck over there at this point. Know what I'm saying? But thank God that he was alive. I mean, awake. Know what I'm saying? Walked right in. If I wasn't awake, I would have been chloroformed and robbed of my entire bag. Right. After this, I started being more careful of the hostels I stay at. Sure, man. That's a Like, man, bro. That's crazy. Courtney. I once went to Miami Beach by myself for the Art Basel and to just escape the cold. My friend Mia would be there with her boyfriend and I'd meet up with them, but I wasn't staying with them. Hotels and Airbnbs in Miami aren't cheap though, especially if you're flying solo. So I went with this hostel called Bikini Hostel. It's like in the heart of Miami Beach, and it was pretty crowded. Even the check-in lobby had some people in it. It had a younger vibe, mostly people in their 20s. Some people seemed to be there in groups, others solo like me. I didn't spend too much time in the hostel though, it was only meant as a place to sleep for me. The place had lockers that you could put your bags in, so I was able to be gone the entire day with peace of mind. It wasn't until that first night that I returned and met some of the people in the room with me. I was in a mixed dorm, meaning both male and females, though I was actually the only female in the room. 
I wasn't necessarily uncomfortable with that. I wasn't really there for the people, more so just the money saved. I met about three of the however many people were actually staying in the room. The next morning, I woke up, and first thing I did was look for my phone, which I thought I left on the bed. I looked all over the bed and then under it. Someone in the room had to have taken it. Oh, man. I started asking everybody if anybody had it. I asked the guy in the bed next to me to call my number and see if we could hear it ring, but no one could. I started to question if maybe I didn't bring it back to the room after all. I borrowed the same guy's phone to call my friend Mia and tell her I lost my phone and to meet me at the brunch place we wanted to hit. I checked the entire room one last time, then checked with the front desk and asked them to call Mia's number if anyone should turn my phone in. Then I left to meet Mia at this place on Collins Avenue to get brunch with her and her boyfriend. While there, I used Mia's phone to sign into iCloud to check find my iPhone. It said the last known location was at the hostel two hours ago. That gave me some form of relief because maybe I left it in my bag or the locker or something. We went back to the hostel together and looked everywhere in the room, including the locker and my bag. It didn't turn up and this made absolutely no sense, but I wasn't going to let it ruin my trip. We walked to the convention center, which was where the Art Basel was being held. After leaving hours later, we grabbed a late lunch or early dinner and hit a couple bars afterwards. At some point, I checked find my iPhone on Mia's phone again, and this time it said my phone had moved. It was basically right on top of us. Mia and her boyfriend joked about me being sure I don't have it on me. I told them I absolutely do not. I looked around for anyone who might have my phone, but what would I even look for? Right. I put my phone into lost mode now that I knew someone had it. Mia's boyfriend screamed out, did anybody find a lost phone, but no one came forward. Though everyone looked at us and some people left, that's for sure. We tried calling my phone a bunch of times, and though it would ring, no one picked up. I went back to the hostel when it was dark out to change clothes. As I was walking back, I was starting to accept that maybe my phone wasn't going to be returned to me. But my entire walk back, I felt like this weird looking guy was following me. He took every single same turn I took. I don't think he noticed that I noticed, but I was very suspicious he was following me. When I got back to the room, I went on my laptop before getting changed to check find my iPhone again, and now the location was back in the hostel. I was excited because I thought maybe they were returning it. No. I checked the front desk though, and nothing. I asked a bunch of people in the hostel too. No one had it, or at least they weren't admitting to it. So I went to Instagram on my laptop and started DMing Mia to keep her updated on when I'd be ready to meet them out. I went to take a quick shower, then changed into more going out appropriate attire. When I came out from the bathroom and back into the room, I was shocked to see that man that I thought was following me was sitting in one of the beds on his phone. Oh, no. it was there were two phone. other guys in the room with us at that moment, but I had a scary thought, so I hurried to DM Mia to call my phone right now. She said okay, and then I heard the sound of a phone vibrating in a pocket or on a bed. I looked up at the guy, who suspiciously looked back at me at the same time as if he knew, and that told me everything. Oh, I started yelling, give me my phone, exclaiming, I got you, to him. The other two guys in the room helped me, and demanded the guy empty his pockets and give me my phone. He listened, and took out a phone, sure enough, my phone. Wow. I snatched it from his hand, and told the other two guys that he had been following me all day, and was wow. purposely avoiding returning my phone, which he probably took while I was asleep. The guy got up and hurried out of the building with his backpack, never returning. But like, why I, would you, but, but my thing is, like, why would you even follow her, like, you know you have her phone, right? Why would you follow her back to the hostel that you were, I guess she was staying at? And, like, you literally, I mean, so what was you about to do? Like, it's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what was you trying to do? Was you trying to, like, like, or like, wait, did she go to sleep or something and, and like try to like take advantage of her? Like, what was you going to do? Know what I'm saying? Like, like, you feel me? The guy got up and hurried out of the building with his backpack, never returning. I made friends with the two guys who helped me. Their names were Mark and Paulo. I had them come out with me to meet up with Mia. I'm grateful they were there because I wonder how things would have played out differently if they weren't. Right. I also recommend keeping your phone and valuables in a very safe place if you ever stay in a hostel. And just generally be aware of the people around you. Mm, 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 mm. Wow, bro. Shout out to Mr. Nightmare, man. Those were three dope videos, man. Like dope stories. 
and like and and the guy and guys and um ladies like if you guys ever go out of town or just or just you know like you know like over the waters overseas anything like that to the UK or whatever um and and get a hostel please don't go alone for one like don't go alone and just and just make sure you keep all your valuables close by you your phone your most important stuff your phones your wallet like things like that like whatever or whatever like i mean never get too careless out there bro because it can all be gone in a matter of seconds you feel me man so um again i shout out mr nightmare man i'm gonna tell you how you guys feel about this video by liking or disliking the video let's get it to 200 likes and let me know on like what else to um check out for mr on nightmare like make sure you guys are tuned in tomorrow when i drop another one for y'all man and s r t gang i am out this thing man Let's get it.